Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode we're going to take a little look at a Honda HRX 476. Uh, this mower belongs to a friend of mine. He bought it in a little while ago for a service and I did recommend it needed a carburetor tune and clean. Um, however, he didn't get it done because he, he's a professional lawn care guy and with what's floating around the world at the moment, he wants to get the machine just out and get earn some money. So, However, it has now sort of bitten him in the bottom because now the machine is playing up and I believe it now needs to come in for a carburetor clean. He says it won't idle. Um, it's hunting and surging a little tiny bit and just needs a bit of, a bit of love and uh, affection and also the pull cord assembly is it won't, it's not retracting all the way but um, I have since washed the machine off and it was absolutely full up with dust and, and what have you so I know it was clean when I serviced it um, but uh, a little bit of a clean and polish and a little blow off now and again wouldn't hurt it and that would be fine but that's what's coming anyway um, we've got a few parcels turned up over the past day or two the first one I'm going to do this one here um, this one is uh, addressed to myself, um, mixed mowers. Uh, it says, in a safe place, must be delivered today, food items. Check label for instructions or call depot if in doubt, is what it says. There you go. So we've got a parcel here. Oh my Lord. Oh my word. Okay. Apparently, uh, there's nothing quite like the taste of hot original glazed donuts straight from the line. Uh, if you if you can't grab one in store, then here's how to recreate it at home. Grab your original glazed donut, pop it in the uh, microwave for eight seconds, and enjoy it warmed to perfection. So these, I know, there's no note with it, I don't believe. Double check. Uh, no, no note of it, but I do know that these um, have come from the lawnmower detective. Um, I didn't know that because he very, very sneakily um, asked for my phone number just for contact detail. Um, but with uh, all the modern technology of Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, all that sort of stuff, you don't need a person's phone number. You can just you know, FaceTime or whatever. So I was a bit suspicious. Anyway, I then got a text about the uh, next day to say your order for um, creme fraiche donuts have come through and will be delivered in the next couple of days. So I thought, hmm, donuts? Someone asked me for my, for my phone number who likes donuts. Um, I thought well, only one person can have, can have ordered them. And uh, yeah, that has come from the lawnmower detective. Oh my word, these look horrible. Oh, they look absolutely disgusting. So we've got some, oh yeah, Mrs. Mrs. P and Nana wouldn't, wouldn't want these. They actually indoors cooking a low fat meal. But we've got some original glazed uh, 36912 uh, donuts there. Now I, I'm not really a donut sort of person. But uh, all my kids are, what have you. So thank you very much, Dave. Much appreciated. I, I, I tend not to eat the old donuts because, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a fan. Oh, I've got cream in them as well. Oh, they're horrible. Oh, yeah. Absolutely disgusting, they are. I couldn't possibly eat another one. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're horrible. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, they're disgusting. Yeah, we don't like them at all. Absolutely horrible. Um, someone also sent me a genuine Mountfield RS100 uh, fuel line, uh, which has been beveled at the end. Don't know who that's come from. No idea. It was on the Amazon wish list, um, but um, I've got no idea. No name of that one. Oh, them donuts are disgusting. Oh, and then this one's come the other day as well. Uh, someone sent me some rubber um, fuel hose. I think it's for Quantum. That was on my Amazon wish list. And also, someone sent me a valve grinding kit, the tool and the valve, valve grinding paste. That was cool. This has come from the same person, I believe. And someone's also sent me a pack of washers, which is fantastic. I think they all come from the same person. Oh, and donuts are disgusting. I hate donuts. Um, I'll grab his bits of paperwork this morning. Yeah, all right. I think it will come from the same person. That's a receipt. That's from who it's from. That's a receipt. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all, all come from the same person. And these are come from, it just says, enjoy your gift from Sam. Sam, I've no idea who you are. I don't know if that's your, your real name, YouTube name, but no idea. Um, your real name is Samuel. Um, but this has come from Sam. I've got no idea who you are. But anyway, thank you very much. If, uh, for whatever reason, you, you found it in the goodness of your heart to send me those, those gifts. Absolutely brilliant. I can't thank you enough. Super duper handy. So thank you, Sam. If anyone else would like to check out my Amazon wishes, feel, please feel free. It's in my description. Oh, and donuts are disgusting. 
Um, yeah, check it out and um, feel free to send me a little Riley Boy little tool, that should be cool. Lawnmower Detective, these donuts are disgusting. Um, so what we're going to do is, we're going to talk with a mouthful. We'll sort out this um, Honda HRX 476, get that up on the old bench. I think, I'll show you what it runs like first, carb it straight off, um, give that a clean, give the old jet a rim out, and um, we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. It's donut time. Mm, disgusting. Right, let's get the machine out. Now I have to build a ramp uh, going into my shed to save me lifting stuff, which uh, I'm quite pleased with. It's just a little, a little rough thing I just knocked up in about half an hour yesterday. It now saves me lifting anything into the shed. Got a, a nice purpose-built uh, ramp or whatever, so I'll show you that in a bit. Right, so here's a Honda HRX 476 that was coming to the shop. Is, there it is there. Um, as I say, uh, this is hunting and surging, uh, is what the, the bloke said. Uh, plenty of fuel on it. And he said it doesn't idle, doesn't pick up, and the pull cord doesn't fully retract all the time. See that? that. Um, so I've got to look, in, look into that as well. Um, I dare say it's probably just dust in there. That's the main reason why they fail. So let's just let, see how it runs. Onto choke. Don't like the rotor clutch either, it's a bit cold. So that's what we've got, uh, pull cord to do. Uh, look into that, bites one and all and a clean up and then a carburetor as well. Let me show what I've been up to as well. We'll have a little wander, shall us? Um, so first of all, uh, I've been putting some slabs in just down here, uh, down the side of a, the old garden. So that way I can then come straight in into a shed. Um, no problems. Built a little purpose-built ramp as well, a little ramp and platform. So just scoop machine straight in. Don't tell Mrs. P, but I've got one or two more. They come up later on. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's Riley Boy's new trampoline behind the washing. And he got a new swing set as well uh, the other day for his birthday. And here is the old shack. Um, borrowed a couple of tiny bags from work. Uh, they only throw them away anyway, so uh, I picked them up just to take the old stuff down the tip. But there's the old mixed mower shack. Uh, all of that lot there, uh, that came out of uh, that rockery down there. So whoever the, the previous owner put, put over some leftover bricks in there and what have you so yeah the mixed mower shack's now gone idea is to move this shed down here a little bit put a fence across here stop peeking eyes and all that will then be put to grass and eventually mrs p wants a hot tub in there and uh, a decking feature over here that's the idea so anyway let's go back into the shed and uh we'll uh put this honda hrx 476 onto the old uh the old bench have a look at it and see what we can't do right i'll go and grab the old machine as you can see so much easier i've got mine in your head to get the machines in now you haven't got to lift nothing which is a bit of a forward fault for as i get a bit older in life so now big heavier honda hrx 476 go up on the ramp around the corner and then i haven't lifted it haven't lifted it at all um, I want to turn the machine around because the carburetor is on the other side. So let me just turn it around, get it up on the table, and we'll have a look from there. Right, so what I've done, just removed the pull cord. Uh, one of the studs came off uh, with this instead, so it's no problem. You can just spin it around like so. Um, look at this. The pull cord I put on here is quite a thick pull cord, and I think that may be a problem why it started to uh, 
to get stuck. So I'm gonna put a slightly thinner pork on. This is a three mil, um, no, sorry, 3.5. Yeah, so I'm gonna put a, a, a three mil on there instead. So I've got here, yeah, ready to rock and roll. Um, so we put a three mil on and hopefully that'll, that'll stop that issue. <coughs> a bit of luck and find my lighter, there it is. Let's just burn that up. Get that ready. I'm just gonna pull this pull cord out all the way. And then with a pair of forceps, just gonna grab the pull cord assembly. And all I'm gonna do is just literally like for like it with a slightly thinner pull cord. Right in there, that is. <clears throat> but it is very, very dirty in here, very dusty, which isn't helping. So let's bring a new, a new pull cord in. Put it through, set out. And just line that up. Where's the old way? Is there? Male squirrel on top of the shed. Hmm. Problem is, I can't remove the, that stud, so I'm going to struggle. I'm trying to spin it round one more time on that as well. No, that's as far as that wants to go. I don't want to go more than that. Let's put it through the old way instead then. Play ball that way, we'll get you the other way. We'll get you like that. All right, so you want roughly about five or six feet of this. Oh, sorry, uh, six or seven feet. That's going to be six feet. That's about seven where it is there, so I'm happy with that. I'll just cut that off with my old Nipex. Whilst well, keeping hold of that pull cord at all times, you can't keep hold of the pull cord, just put some in between the veins of it, it just stops it from spinning. Tie a little knot in there. I'm just going to cut that off just to trim it back, just to get rid of the knots of the frayed bits. Pile that off there. Give that a little burn up. Happy with that. That's all good. Now we can bring the pull cord assembly back onto there. That seems a bit better. I'm happy with that. I'll give it a little tiny quick spray off. And WD-40 and then I'm just going to air compress that as well just to get rid of some of that muck that's in there there's quite a bit in there so let me get it compressed off and I'll be back in two ticks right so um, pull cord's now all done um, hopefully that'll do a better job it's all been um, cleaned off compressed off and what have you so that's better um, so next thing to do is the, is the fuel situation we've got going on uh, the hunting surging, that, that side of it. So um, I turn the fuel off. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then uh, remove 
uh, said filter. And as you can see, this fellow's professional lawn care guy. This is only serviced, oh, I don't know, uh, two months ago, in fact, I think. So you can already see uh, the dust and stuff that's already in here. Uh, he, he needs to pay more attention to his uh, intermittent um, services. He can do it himself to sort of a tin of compressed air, just, just blow that off, you know? So many people who are professional lawn care guys, they just run these machines to a death. Um, and and their life is cut short because um, they don't just clean the machines up. You got to do it. You got to do it. Otherwise, you're gonna, the machine's going to fail. So, two ten mils here. I'm assuming it's going to be straight into the, into the carburetor. Yeah. Remove the air box pipe. We should remove the crankcase breather. And I did say to him that this car, this did need a carburetor clean when it was last in, but he needed them, because of what's going around the world at the moment, he needed the machine back and up and running. So it has sort of bit him in the bum a little bit because he was supposed to get it serviced up. Uh, the carburetor is absolutely, I show the carburetor, it's absolutely filthy, absolutely minging. Um, but as I say, you know, he didn't have a time. And with what's floating around the world at the moment, you know, money's a bit tight. So he wanted just to get the machine up and running as quick as he could, so he could earn himself a few quid. Let's try and remove his fuel line off of here. Which is now just split slightly. That's not a biggie. There's always plenty of room for uh, moving it up one. They give you stupid little clips, do they? On these, which I hate. Oh, also found my side cutters too. My, my old, my old pair. They were down, down by the shed. I'm well happy I found them. Well happy. Try to turn the fuel off, Mick. Does help. That's it. I turn the fuel on. Um. So he has been using this machine. Uh, already for the season, and then it started to, to incur these, these issues with the hunting and surging. So let me just show you this carby, absolutely minging, absolutely encrusted, you know. And if it's like that on the outside, it ain't going to be far, far short of that on the inside either, I dare say. So let's get over to the bench, we'll have a little look at it, see what we can't do. Um, and we'll go from there. I'll try and save this gasket if I can too, this heat shield gasket. I'd like that to come off if I can. So yeah, let me get over to the bench and uh, we'll have a little look. I'll get a bit of a clean and a, and a compress off first as well before I put it on the bench because it's absolutely filthy. Right, I think we're half sensible, good to go. So let's get the old carbine. It's had a bit of a blow off, nothing nothing uh, hideous, just a, a bit of a clean because I can't, can't work with all that dirt in there. We're trying to clean carbies. So we'll loosen up this uh, little 10 mil. Tip it on its side, because you want to try and keep all this dirt in the bowl, just so we can inspect it. I'm not expecting it to be hideous, because um, it, it, you know, it, it is actually running. What I can't even do is I can't even get the bowl off. Oh, word. There it goes. Uh, yeah, little tiny bits of dirt in there, little tiny granulates. So if the granulates are there, the granulates would be in the main jet. So not, not hideous, 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 but um, definitely to a degree where he's getting something in. And again, I can't emphasize, you know, if, if, your, if your fuel tank that you, that you pour your petrol from your can into your tank is dirty with dust, all you're doing is pouring dirt straight into your carburetor. That's all you're doing. So we'll take that out, float, the old pin comes out with it as well. Yeah, don't look too shabby in here. Don't look too shabby. We'll have this, um, we'll have this idler screw put all the way forwards and then um, remove that slow running jet out as well. So let me just grab a quick Phillips very quickly. I've got a few tools over the place because I have been busy uh, out in the garden doing bits and bobs um, for uh, 
getting the shed down, all that, all that sort of good stuff. I can't find my trusty Phillips one I normally use. It must be up. I've just spotted it. So we're gonna wind this one in. Or out, let's take it out. So wind that all the way out, put that to one side. I don't think it's an ultrasonic cleaner job. I think it's just that we get away with a manual on this. Take this one out here, like so. That's quite clean. And then in here, we've got a, a main jet in here. It is there. I know that that came out nice because uh, I, I was the last to put the jet in, so it's always nice when you don't wind them in too hard. You ain't got to go looking for them. Come on, Mr. Main Jet. He's right in there too. He's right in there, Mr. Main Jet. Let me get this jet out just by tapping it and banging it about and it will come out. It's coming there, it's, it's, just, it's just hanging on for dear life. I can see it just starting to rear its head. But it is proper stuck in there, is Mr. Main Jet. Yeah, let me just have a quick tap. When it comes out, I'll come back to you. Right, got the main jet. It came out. It pretty much came out about after three hits. After a, after a, I turn the camera off. So the, the, the actual, the actual um, main jet is not hideous. It's not hideously plugged, but it, I think it is slightly restricted. So all we're going to do with this one is the same as all the others. Find the file that just just fits. It's got to fit. Don't punch nothing through. It's going to be too, too um, too big. That's the one. That's the one I want. And just a bit of sideways pressure. Just want to reopen. Just clean the side walls of that of that main jet up. And you can pretty much tell straight away <coughs> that it's um it already improved um, the gap. Yeah, that's lovely and big now. And then this tube um, that's got holes all in here. There's about six or eight holes. And all we're going to do is just going to give them a quick file as well. As I say, I'm not actually filing it back. I'm just reopening the holes back up. That's all I'm doing. And what's a tiny one, which I think could be you. Maybe even smaller. That one. Yep, that's a cookie. So all I'm doing is just reopening these holes back up. That one was plugged. That's it, that's got him. <clears throat> Let's get a bit of uh, a bit of carburetor spray because uh, I want to make sure it's nice and clean and then I want to compress the main jet out and the tube out as well. <clears throat> so a bit of carby spray. And 
that's running nice. Block the end up. That's good. And then the main jet itself. That's running nice too. So they've both been cleaned, they can go out of the way. The bowl, as I say, this little tiny bit of dirt in the bottom of the bowl, that's all there is, there's not a great deal in there. So a bit of blue roll. <clears throat> Just take that dirt out. Also clean the outside of it as well, because you don't introduce nothing in when you're, when you're cleaning. And if there's anything residual sitting in there, just get your screwdriver and just, just try and take that out if you can. Because if you don't, it'll just break down a bit later on and uh, get back in there. Bit of carby spray. Yep. That's nice and clean. So now I'm going to convert over to um, WD-40. As you all know, I don't use a lot of carb spray, especially on carbies. I tend to use it on jets and what have you, but let's just see how this carburetor is running. That's coming up through very nice. That's coming up through the bottom. That's good. One round here. all that stuff out of there. There's one just in there I want to get to. It's good. Down through there. That's good. There's a hole in here. Down through the centre. Down through the seat. Back through the seat. And that's it. That's all you've got to do. So I'll give it a little tiny bit of a compress off now. Just to make sure all the gunk is, uh, is out. There's a little tiny bit of gasket on there. I'll take that off. With my dental pick. Good, good, good. So we're happy with the way the carb is now looking. It's nice and clean. Bit of stuff there though, we'll have that off. Just on that flap. You don't get it out. Um, it'll only go back in there later on. Wash it off with WD-40 in case that ring swells up. And that's it, done. So I'll get a quick compress off, I'll put it all back together and I'll meet you back over by the machine and uh, we're going to refit the carburetor. Right, carb is all now been cleaned up, good to go, good to rock and roll, which is what we like. Just got to now fit this carburetor back on. First thing you want to do is you want to hook up your fuel hose. That's the first thing you want to do. Um, once that's in place, then you can sort of manipulate the rest of the carby. So what I'm going to do is hook up the, um, the governor arms first off. Because they're, they're the two difficult ones to do. Because the carburetor's got to be tipped up on its side to do that. So put your spring on, that goes on the nearest hole. And then your throttle, one goes on behind. And then your carby, your choke, and then you can then tip your, yep, tip your, uh, your carby over. Then you can then hook up your, your fuel line, drop the carburetor down ever so slightly, and just push your fuel line on. Thank you. 
just inspecting this fuel line. Yeah, it's okay. So that's all now on. <coughs> I've dropped a gasket on the floor, which I'm gonna need. That gasket goes on here, just there. And you've got your, your carb insulation block goes on as well. That's gotta sit on. So put your put your uh, your block in place. That will probably fall off in a minute because I've got to put all the rods in and what have you. So just just marry it up into place roughly roughly where you want it. Now you're all probably shouting at me and screaming at me, Mick. For Christ's sake, man, will you please use some dowels? No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Quick blow off on the old air box because that's absolutely covered in stuff. Front and back. Absolutely smothered. And the reason I've just got a quick rinse off first is just to stop the dust from flying everywhere. Hot, filthy. That's a bit more like it. We like that. Get your two carby bolts, put them in the holes. Uh, gasket to go on next, just marry your gasket up. It's gonna go that way. Put them on the two bolts. Push them on down tight through. So my fuel hose is all now on. I can now lift my carburetor up. I can now put my bolts in place. There's one. There's the other. As you push it in, you've got to connect up your crankcase breather pipe, which is this kitty just down here. Little tiny rubber pipe. It always falls down. So just have that up into place ready for where you want it. Bend it up. Roughly into place. I've got a heat shield gasket to put on as well. It goes on that way, and there should be a little hole in the back of a carby, which should be, yeah, that way around. So that's what I've gone to there. I'll give that a clean too, that's filthy too. That's probably not gonna be helping anything. Give that a quick little blast off too, a clean. I'm gonna be introducing any more dirt into this machine than I can already. It's just filthy, it's absolutely filthy. The whole machine. All right, push all them into place. That's that one, that's that one. And now I'll hook up my crankcase breather, which is done easy with the, uh, the actual engine pull cord that's gonna be taken off, but you can get your finger in there quite quick if you're quite lucky and just push that on, which I've now done. So mine's now in place. So now we're gonna so now we're gonna hook up this little heat shield, pull them bolts out of touch, slide this little cookie in. There it goes. Yeah, just gonna get one lined up. You're pretty much laughing. There's one. I'll line the second one up, line his brother up. Oh yeah, there you are there. All right, that's them two lined. Push them bolts in. And then grab your mono block or your insulation block. Slide that one in. That's it. That's all in. That's all in. 
crankcase breathers on. Done. <clears throat> Not the easiest on the Hondas, and everyone's got their own way of doing it. Right, <clears throat> so that's all now on. I'm going to turn the fuel on and just uh, wait two or three minutes, inspect, wait for a few, uh, a few minutes if any leaks turn up. As long as no leaks turn up, um, I'll meet you outside. I'm going to blow the air filter off as well. It's not in for a new air filter, but uh, it, it could do with one, but uh, he wants it just running. So as do a lot of uh, lawn care guys, they just want it running. So let me get the air filter cleaned off and blown off and then I'll meet you outside in two ticks. Okay. So now we'll give it a go, see what happens. I have just tweaked that governor back a touch as well. Because um, when, when it was running, it wasn't running nowhere near as high as what it should do. So I've just bent the governor back just a touch. So I may have to readjust it later on, we'll see how we get on. But either way, this machine wouldn't idle um, and it was surging and the pull cord was the issue. So let's see how we get on now. On a choke. I'm just going to try and adjust the carburetor slightly, um, move that back. it's running a little bit too quick for my liking. So a quick little play about of it and I'll come back in two ticks. Right, so I'm hoping it's all now done. Bit of fine tuning going on. So now, it, um, full revs is fine. Rover touch works. Bring down to idle. That's about the best I'm going to get it. Fine line on that tick over. We don't cut grass on tick over, right? That should do it. Okay, so that's that little Honda lawnmower now all up and running. I would say I'm 99.9% .9 happy with it. Um, I think it needs a new carby. It, that's the truth for the matter. Um, it runs beautiful and uh, it idles not as well as a Honda should. Um, the problem is, is those, those little tiny Hondas, they're governed with the uh, little tiny um, mixture screw. You can take them off, uh, but for, for what it costs for a, another carburetor, they're cheap enough just to literally just buy a new carburetor for them. So I might suggest um, to run it, see how it goes, and then to come back if there's any problems and just put a new carburetor on there and that, that little problem then solved. But uh, it all runs, starts, fires up, cuts grass and it drives and all the rest of it. Now it now cuts um, faster as well because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't cutting anywhere near or the revs weren't as high as they should be is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, it's done and hopefully um, Luke will be super, super happy about it. He's now on holiday and when he comes back, he'll have his lawnmower good to go. So hopefully he'll be happy as, um, as Larry. So that's that video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two more on the Saturday night weekly live stream which starts at 6.30pm UK time. 
I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until people don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.